This has massive implications for the Edmonton Oilers following last night's game against the New Jersey Devils and some work that needs to be done on the special teams. And alongside that, we have some news regarding uh, an Oilers organizational move. But before we get into all that, make sure to subscribe here to Oilers Digest as we are on the road to 2,200 subscribers. Make sure to join the ride here as we get into the second month of the Oilers season, what seems to be very up and down Oilers season, but they always like to make things interesting. But first, trade? Yes, a trade. The Edmonton Oilers did make a trade yesterday with the Philadelphia Flyers, acquiring defenseman Ronnie Attard from the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for defenseman Ben Gleason. You can see their Bob Stoff with a bit of a mini scouting report on Ronnie. He can shoot the pill, double digit goals in each of the last two seasons in the AHL. He's a six foot three right shot defenseman, has some upside, and he's also not considered an AHL veteran. And it alleviates the Bakersfield logjam with veterans as the AHL has a rule uh, regarding a, a veteran limit in every game. So this allows, you know, the Condors to have a more consistent lineup. As you can see here, Ronnie Tard's stats with the Flyers and the Lehigh Vanny Phantoms putting up 22 goals uh, in his AHL career as a defenseman. Uh, you know what? That's that's not too shabby at all. A bit of a reclamation project for the Oilers. They like to seem to be taking these on as the season is progressing. Of course, they did pick up Roby Yerbenty from the Ottawa Senators earlier in the summer. And that, you know, brings the Condors with a lot of right shot defensemen there. And some defensemen that I think are above Ronnie in the depth chart. Guys like Cam Deneen, Max Warner, uh, and Philip Kemp. And then you have Josh Brown there for some reason. I mean, a three-year contract. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Bo. Moment, but uh, aside from that, I mean, it's pretty much uh, a minor league deal. You know, not a chance we'll ever see Ronnie unless, you know, there are some injuries that do happen on the Oilers' blue line. But again, it is just a reclamation project for the Oilers and to alleviate some on the left-hand side. Of course, Ben Gleason was a left-side defenseman with the Oilers right now. That left side, again, bit of a logjam, but... Let's get right into the game last night against the New Jersey Devils. That's right, inconsistency isn't key. Uh, if you look at the box score, you know you can you can see the Oilers stats from last night saying, "Hey, um, they should have won this game," and they should have. But the Devils won it three nothing. Of course, Stefan Nason makes it one nothing for the Devils after a glorious chance for the Oilers on the other end, and then in the second period. The Oilers' penalty kill sinks the team yet again as Yester Brat is left alone, all alone in the slot, making it 2 nothing Devils. And then a Zach Hyman giveaway at the blue line leads to a Dawson Mercer alley-oop pass to Timo Meyer, making it 3 nothing Devils. And Jake Allen gets the shutout, the 31-save shutout. I mean, again, uh, it was a very easy 31-save shutout for Jake Allen, aside from maybe the Zach Hyman uh, breakaway in the first period. And then there was also a Adam Henrique shot that went off the crossbar there, but you can see there in the power plays, it's not much, but it was enough to sink the Oilers. Devils went one for one on the power play. Meanwhile, the Oilers 0 for one on their power play. You know, again, the only positive from that one, the Oilers kept it respectable in the face-off circle, but that is just coping at this point. You can see there the shot chart for the Oilers. I mean, it's not like Jake Allen had like a tremendously easy game. Of course, in the first period, the Oilers did have uh, a multitude of of chances, especially from that Yan Yanmark Henrique in Connor Brown line, and of course uh, again the Zach Hyman breakaway. But as the uh, the second and third uh, progressed, the Oilers just kind of chucked anything at net and weren't able to generate anything, um, anything you know, remoting you know uh, a high danger scoring chance. In my eyes, of course, the stats say otherwise. There is the Corsi percentage, fifty five, almost sixty six percent Corsi four compared to the Devils. 34, and I think that is the definition of getting goalied by Jake Allen there. Of course, you know, the third period, second period, first period, Oilers, uh, again, all over the Devils, but the Oilers not able to capitalize on any of their chances. Meanwhile, the Devils were able to capitalize on all of their chances when they were able to, and there weren't really that much. This is akin to the Dallas Stars game a little over two weeks ago where the Oilers all over their opposition trying to get something in the net, but the opposition takes the puck the other way and they make the Oilers pay. Of course, not not a, a horrible game by the Oilers uh, by any means. I mean, the first three lines there uh, put up respectable underlying stats. You can see there the Yamark Henrique Brown line, 72% core C4. You know, when it comes to the prior games that that line has had, uh, not necessarily strong games, but they did have a very strong game last night despite not scoring 
at all. And Leon Drysaddle with his line mates Arvidsson and Pod Coles. And I think he's found his line mates, folks. Uh, despite what the box score says, the final score, he is pr- not, not so much producing in last night's game, but uh, the past couple games without Connor McDavid, he has found his line mates. So again, another positive coming out of this one, but not a positive is the penalty kill. You can see there the 2 nothing goal by the Devils with Yes, We're Bad pretty much all alone in that Oilers sort of uh, box system on the PK, but Yes, We're Bad sort of sneaks right through. Adam Henrique, no idea where he's going, but Yes, We're Bad makes it 2 nothing Devils. You can see, you know, the Oilers penalty kill. Uh, you know, your penalty kill is only as good as your goalie, but Calvin Pickard and Stuart Skinner, respectively, um, hate to say, they are not strong. And, you know, a good penalty kill needs a good goalie. Of course, the Oilers did lose a whole bunch of uh, penalty killers last year through, you know, free agency. You know, they lost guys like Warren Fogle, uh, Ryan McLeod to the Buffalo Sabres, Vincent DeHarnay, Cody Ceci. So uh, the penalty kill, not as strong this year, and it's a bit worrisome. But again, the stats here for the Oilers goaltenders, I mean, sure, they make fine backups, but, you know, for, to be, you know, uh, two starters in the league, it is not sustainable. Skinner putting up an 881 save percentage, Pickard with an 886, and then the goals against average, uh, again, nothing to be proud of for those two. A 331 for Skinner and a 260 for Pickard. But when it comes to Chris Knobloch's thoughts on the special teams, he says, unfortunately, we gen- I don't think we generated very much. Of course, the Oilers did switch up their, pow- their power play formation with two defensemen with Ekholm and Nurse. And I don't think that that works really well. I think, you know, a guy like Jeff Skinner on the Oilers power play would be phenomenal. Why they haven't tried that, I have no idea. But with Knobloch, continuing Knobloch's thoughts here, uh, but they weren't really scoring chances. If we're talking about scoring chances 5-on-5, five five, I think we did well, and he's not wrong about that, but we haven't drawn many power plays to really generate things and to kind of get in a rhythm and build on them. It's something we need to look at right now. We know our power play is going to get better. We know our penalty kill is going to get better. It's just finding the right execution, and I know you're asking me, why are you being so negative about the team, uh, you know, in their last, you know, uh, seven games four wins, but it's all about being consistent, and that's something the Oilers haven't really done. The only loss that, you know, I think the Oilers uh, should have won uh, decisively was the game against the Carolina Hurricanes when they lost 3-2 in an in in overtime, not a, not a shootout, overtime, and then, of course, the Pittsburgh and Detroit games, uh, the Pittsburgh game, I thought, was one of their best games all season, and the Columbus uh, meltdown, and then, you know, the stereotypical Nashville, rocking the Nashville to win anyways, uh, beat Calgary 4-2 on Sunday night, but again, it was just coming home after that uh, that road trip, of course, there's a road trip, then a back-to-back with travel. I mean, what kind of scheduling is that? And then that, those, those weren't the Oilers that we are uh, used to seeing, uh, you know, on the ice. It's kind of frustrating to see, you know, a performance like that against Calgary. Sure, they kind of uh, let go in the second period after that tremendous first period. But these are the Oilers uh, we are capable of seeing, like, the team against Pittsburgh. They were sticking up for each other. You know, passes were being made, uh, crisp passes, lots of playmaking ability. Sure, they had Connor and David, but, I mean, take one guy out. You still have Leon Dreisaitl. Shouldn't make that much of a difference. But hopefully they uh, bounce back next game against the Vegas Golden Knights in our What Next segment. Yes, they do take on the Vegas Golden Knights uh, tomorrow night on Sportsnet's Wednesday Night Hockey. Of course, you know, a big divisional matchup against the Vegas Golden Knights. And after that, uh, another big divisional matchup against the Vancouver Canucks. So hopefully the Oilers do bounce back, um, you know, try to figure out their special teams because... Right now, they are they are not as special as they were last year during the Stanley Cup playoffs and the finals when they went on that historic run. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of last night's game. What do you think about the Ronnie Tart trade from the Philadelphia Flyers? That's it for today's episode. We will be back with a game preview tomorrow against the Golden Knights. Have yourselves a fantastic day and take care. I'm Matt.